Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Stamping September video. Today we're going to do some stamping and heat embossing. So I have here a piece of mixed media paper that I have cut down into a stitched rectangle panel. I often get asked what mixed media paper I use. It is Dela Rowney Optima mixed media paper. It's about 250 GSM and it's the closest to white of the, all the mixed medias that I've tried. It's slightly textured on the front and pretty smooth on the back and it works fairly well on both sides. Well, it works really well on the front and fairly well on the back, I find. So that's my mixed media paper of choice. Today, I want to heat emboss straight onto my panel, but I want to mask off an area first that's not gonna have any heat embossing on it. I'm going to use masking paper. I'm just gonna cut off this so it's not so cumbersome. I'll take that off as well. We'll just use that bit because I can be careful and not stamp on that. So I've got my stamp positioner here and I've put my mixed media piece in there and I've got some stitched circle stamps. I think these are from Stamping Up, an old set. I picked these up at a charity shop, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's who made them. So I've got my circles here overlapping the edges and overlapping the masked area and I'll pick them up with my door. They're very sticky. I find stamping up stamps, the photopolymer ones are incredibly sticky, which is a good thing. And I've got some embossing ink here. So I'll ink up my circles, but I will put some anti-static powder on there. This is just corn flour in an old sock. You could use talcum powder, or you can buy professional level anti-static pouches or tools. Right, we'll just press that down so that we get a good impression. And just to be doubly sure, I'm gonna pop those. I'm in the mood for a bit of bling today, so I'm going to use my gold embossing powder, but instead of dipping it all the way in like I usually do, I'm just gonna sprinkle it over so that I don't get loads on the masking paper, etc., etc. And now I'll heat that with my heat tool. Right, that is heated and cooled. I'm just gonna press the masking paper down again because the heat from the heat tool caused it to lift up a little bit. I'm gonna put this little circle back in because I think I want another one. I've also got another one, another stitch circle in a slightly different design. This is from a different stamp set. This is from, I think, Global Land on Amazon. So it's just nice to bring in a bit of variation in design. Just for a final bit of something extra, I've got some little blob stamps. Not sure where these came from. So that's all cooled and set and we've got a lovely load of bling there. I'm just going to press down the edge of the masking paper again because now I want to do some blending on this area. For my blending I'm going to use some Catherine Pooler inks. This is Rose Petals from the Spa Collection. These blend really nicely on mixed media paper. I'm going to go in lightly to start with. And gradually build up the colour. And I just want to add a bit of variation by bringing in some Serene. So Rose Petals is a red on the colour wheel and Serene is a blue violet. So they're fairly close to each other on the colour wheel, analogous-ish colours. So they should blend without making mud. And now I want to spatter on a little bit of water. 
to lift a little bit of colour. Before I take the masking paper off, I'm going to use a clean bit of microfiber cloth to polish up the gold because there's probably some ink sitting on top. And now hopefully I can get this masking paper off. We've got a lovely crisp line there, which is exactly what I wanted. What I do want to do now though, is to blend some ink here to make a little thin strip. I could use masking paper for this, but I'm going to use some washi just to show you, you can use washi. I'm sure you already know. And so that I don't accidentally blend where I don't want to go, I'm going to use a finger dauber, a sponge dauber, because it's more accurate and just blend over the gap here. I want this to be quite strong. I want it to be a definitive edge to that bit that we've just made. And now I've got a nice strong edge. It's not as crisp as the edge with the masking paper. I think some of the ink has bled underneath. If you wanted to crisp up that edge, you could get a pen and a ruler and draw a line to cover up any bits. That looks pretty good. And I'll do the other side of the line as well. So I want to put a die cut over my embossed area and I'm thinking this leafy branchy thing with circles because those will go with the little circles that I added and I'm going to cut it out of the De La Rowney mixed media paper so that it matches but before I do that I'm going to mount that bit of mixed media paper on some Sorry, a plane has just gone overhead and it was very loud. So I've put the mixed media paper on some thin foam. And the foam is only a millimetre thick, I think. So it will give the die cut just that little bit of lift. So I think that will look good. About, actually, I'm wondering about having it this way up. I think this looks better. I think the branch looks more grounded when the bottom is on this colourful bit. I'm also going to die cut this just because sentiment out of mixed media paper. So I've got my just because and I was thinking of backing it with black just because we've got this extra black here. I think that works. So I'll dip this in some glue and layer that on there. I'm going to take some of the craft foam that I used on the back of the branch and add it to the back of this, either side of where this is going to cross over the branch, just so everything stays more or less level. And now I'm going to add some crystal glaze to the ends of this branch the circular bits just for some dimension and some gloss and I'll set that aside to dry because I want to obviously mount it on a card blank and I've forgotten to do that before adding the crystal glaze so I will leave that to dry and then come back and add that right I've mounted that onto a card now and I think it's finished part of me wants to do some spattering to get some of this pinky purple this red violet out of here and onto this area but I'm going to resist the urge I think it will do as is but do let me know in the comments would you add anything extra to this card do you think this bit needs to come into this bit or is this hard line just about right right thanks for watching and I hope you've gleaned some ideas of things you can do with your stamps if you have please do leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments subscribe ring that notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for another Stamping September video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.